Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop logo design tutorial, we'll be doing this 3D logo here using the 3D tools. Okay, let's get to it. This logo design is made using two spheres that have a 3D effect on them. So we'll be doing two different 3D effects, actually two different ways of making our 3D in here to get this combined look and then putting in some coloration as well and of course some text down below. Let's start off with a brand new file. Just close this. There we go. And go up to File and New. Now I'm doing this in Photoshop CC 2017 which has a new new file dialog box and here it comes up right now. If you're using the older version of Photoshop, no problem at all. We're just using the default Photoshop size right here, which is 7x5 and horizontal or landscape mode. So it's just, you know, just 7x5 horizontal, which is your default. Choose create or choose OK. And let's change our zoom here to fit screen. There we go. We'll start off by putting in some guidelines. Go up to View and come down to New Guide. We need a vertical guide and a horizontal guide. The vertical guide is going to be halfway through our 7 inch, so that's going to be 3.5 inches. There we go. And the horizontal is halfway through our 5, so it'll be 2.5. So View and come down to New Guide and then set this at horizontal and 2.5 just like that. There we go. Now I'll switch over to the ellipse tool right here. I have my set at the ellipse right here, not the rectangle, but the ellipse. And then up here under the options, set this for circle and from center. And then come down here right on the center. But you don't need to be exact on this, but get close. Click and drag, and then you see your little numbers down there, bottom right hand corner, bring it out so it says three inches. And we can adjust this after the fact, but let's go ahead and hit, see if we can get this exact right now. A little bit of careful work, and you can usually get it almost, not quite. So that brings up the properties when you put that in place, and then just change the width and height here so that these both say 900 pixels, and there's our three inches right there. Okay, close that down. First step done. Now we no longer need these guides. That was just to center our circle. So let's go ahead and let's just hide the extras. And let's make a copy of the ellipse layer. Just drag it down to the new layer button. There we go. And hide the original. That's just in case we ever want to go on back and get the actual circle again. We'll have it saved right there. Okay, now on this ellipse, we're going to be putting a text layer above this. So go to the text. Here's our type and change the color to white. Just drag into the upper left hand corner like that. Choose OK. So it's the type at white. And on this one we're going to be putting in, in this case, a P. And it's real large. This will be set at 320. And just click an insertion point like that. And then Shift P. And there we go. There's the P. I'll put it right here just for a second. The typeface I used on this is called Bama House 93, and I chose this one because of the round part of the P. It looks very much like the round in the background. And the 320 is just large enough so that I can fit this up like that so that the top part cuts out of the top circle up there and the bottom part cuts out of the bottom. There's a whole reason for that size. So I'll set it up so that this corner here just comes just down, just over that edge down there. So there we go. There's the basic position on that P. Now on this hold the control key down, click on the icon where it says T there, that selects the text. We can now just hide that layer, come down to the ellipse copy shape layer, right click on the name and choose rasterize layer. So it's now no longer a shape. Another reason why I saved that shape just in case. Okay, we're on this layer. It's been rasterized. We have our selection, so just hit the delete key. 
and that cuts that selection out. And then let's just deselect. There we go, or Control D. Let's now make a copy of this layer. Just drag this down to the New Layer button right there and make a copy. And let's hide the top one. We'll come back to that in a minute. And let's come down to the first layer. Here we go. One that's shown, this is one that just says Copy. And let's apply our first 3D effect to this layer. Go up to 3D, come down to New Mesh from Layer and Mesh Preset, and then come down to Sphere. Choose OK, and this will then apply a sphere shape right there with that P kind of wrapped around that sphere shape. Okay, that is the first of our 3D effects. We can now hide this layer and then show our top layer. Let's now do the first 3D, or our second 3D effect rather, on this layer up here. We'll be using a different 3D effect on this one. Go up to the 3D menu. This time we're going to be coming down to New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. Just click on that. This will give us a basic 3D extrusion. We'll be changing any of the 3D direction on this one. It's already real nice. But we'll be doing just a few little tweaks on this one to get it exactly the way that we want. Okay, so there we go. There's our basic 3D extrusion. And move up here where it says ellipse 1, copy 1, and the kind of a little star, little 3D shaped star right here. Double click on that, and that brings up the properties. Here we go. Let's start off by clicking on or unchecking cast shadow, and then consider that shadow down below there, so that gets rid of our shadow. Now on the extrusion depth, set this to 1.5. So it's 1.5 right there, and there we go. That gives us our thinner edge in here. The extrusion is the depth of the 3D effect. Okay, that looks good. Now let's close this just for a second. Switch over here to the light right there, and then double click on that, this little icon right in front of infinite light. Double click on that. That brings up our lights. Let's now change the color. Click on the color icon, and we want kind of a light blue up in here someplace like this. Now the color that I actually used on this one, if we go down here to the RGB, is 70 on the R, 211 on the G, and 252 on the B. So choose that and choose OK. And that sets our basic color. Now it's too dark. You can control the darkness and brightness right down here. So I'll pull this to the right. Notice how it gets brighter as I pull this to the right. You can go real bright or real dark. That's what this control does. So set the intensity here to 450. There we go. Okay, that all looks good. Everything else can stay the same. Now I'll go over here. This is the mesh. That just shows you just this part of this whole view. So it's just easier. That's why. Go to the mesh. Double click on the star again. Brings back up that properties. And now let's change the shape preset in here. And in the shape presets, we have several rows in here of presets. There's row one. That's row two. This is row three. You want the first one in row three, which is deflate. Click on that. And that gives us this nice kind of a metallic-y kind of an effect in there. Okay, that takes care of that shape. Let's now just close that down. Let's collapse the 3D up here. That's done. We can now hide all of that stuff on that. That's fine. Let's now show the ellipse copy one in the background again. Now all that fancy stuff we did there, that was so we have just this kind of little strange shadow in here and a little bit of a shadow showing up there. Everything else is just that sphere. Okay, we want to get rid of the shadow down below here, so let's bring our properties back up. Double click on the icon. This reopens the 3D and then double click on the icon in front of sphere. And that brings back up the properties. And then is uncheck cast shadows. And that gets rid of that. Okay, let's close that down. Close that down. Now we need to have our coloration on this. And we'll do that by putting a layer above this and blending that layer in. It's just an easy way to do this. So we'll go up to layer and come down here to new fill layer and solid color. Where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Make sure that's checked. That will link this layer right into just that sphere layer and ignore everything else, in this case the background. Choose OK. It begins off with white. We want kind of an orange, kind of a bright orange 
in here for this. Now the color that I used on this one, I'll do it with the hexadecimal numbers down here, is FCCF19, right there. So that's FCCF19. And again, you can see it's just up right in the middle of the oranges is up here, up near the upper right hand corner. Choose OK. Now we need to blend this into that sphere in the background. And that's using our blend mode. Come down here and just come clear to the bottom and choose color. And that just puts the color onto that sphere in the background. There we go. There's our background sphere. Okay, the logo part of this is done. Let's now go up to the top layer and we'll add in our text. So back to the type tool. We're still on the Bauhaus 93. Let's change the type size to 24 point. And over on our color, let's change the color. And this time I used 0468885. Right there, just kind of a medium blue in here and kind of medium value on that as well. Kind of medium blue, medium value, and choose OK. I have the type set at centered right there. Let's bring back up our guide. So view and let's show our extras. And then right in here, right on that middle guideline, right about down here, just click there. And let's go ahead and type this in. This Pearson Precision Parts right there. It's centered so it matches the center of that. And we can then hide those extras. And there we go. There's the logo. Let's just zoom in just a bit on this and see how that looks. About as far as I can go, I think. There we go. Okay, so there it is. There's a 3D design spherical logo and, of course, our text down below. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.